Hi, everybody. Um, welcome tonight to Soaring Socially, and welcome back, uh, my co-owner, JP Kilduff. Uh, what's up? What's up? We're so excited to finally have you back here. So welcome back to Soaring Socially. He's been out and about busy speaking and doing, I mean, why don't I let you tell him, JP, what you've been doing? Oh, man. Uh, yeah, life has been busy. I'm sure it's been busy for everybody. You know, um, as the world gets back to some form of normalcy, you know, it's, uh, you know, everyone's just dying to get out and, you know, do all the things this year that they didn't do last year. Our 4th of July was amazing. Uh, we went down to Colonial Williamsburg and we got to enjoy a spectacular 20 minute fireworks show and it was just absolutely packed with everybody who was missing fourth of july from last year and you know i think that's just a lot of what's been going on and you know with our family and our businesses is like everything's just kind of getting back to normal and ramping up uh so it's been exciting cool awesome so it you know it's very nice to have you back with us um tonight actually we are going to talk about something that is jp's favorite topic. He is so good at implementing systems. So we're going to talk about systems management 101 and um, basically just uh, some systems that you should implement from the ground up in your business and whether or not you go with uh, the exact companies that we're talking about is up to you. But these are the generalized systems that we believe are foundational. And so many people I don't know about you, JP, but for me, when you first started your business, there's no handbook out there that tells you you need to get this, this, this and that, right? No, absolutely not. It's like you got to figure it out and you kind of make do with what you've known for your entire life, even though that may not be the best fit or the tool or anything like or that. Or what you so, saw yeah. on TV, which may be the most expensive or the most, you know, like the high obviously a well-promoted brand, you yeah, know, for sure. So, yeah. And, and, that, and the great thing about being an entrepreneur and having a, a business is that there are so many different options and ways that you can do things. And, you know, like, just like tonight's topic is just one way, you know, whatever I share that's worked for us, it's just one way to build a business based off of systems using like Google workspace and stuff like that. But there's many other systems out there that, that we can talk about as well. Awesome. Um, well, you mentioned Google Workspace, and that is a huge um, utilization tool. So why don't you maybe talk a little bit, if you don't mind, just about Google Workspace and how you've implemented it in your many businesses and why you rely on it? Yeah, I think, um, you know, and Jessica, you've, you've experienced this firsthand with us through Anchored Homes uh, was your first introduction to the way that I've been taught and I implement Google Workspace and then now through social soaring and what we've developed there. And I think that, you know, for us, Google is the backbone of our entire organization because I think first and foremost, what it promotes is just a, a very collaborative uh, environment that doesn't exist on somebody's laptop which is one of the biggest benefits I think of implementing entire business on the backbone of Google is that it can be done anywhere by anybody and it allows you to easily grow and scale your business and give people access to certain things that you develop because they're not stuck on your desktop or like right here on your desk and a piece of paper, you know, the way mom and dad probably used to run uh, a business and stuff like that. So, you know, we've adopted over time, you know, we started with Gmail. It was like the first thing that we implemented. And then, you know, from Gmail, we heard about this cool thing called Google Drive, which was a game changer in our business because that allowed us to have like that cloud uh, storage that, you know, you could access in Tennessee and I could access in New Jersey or Virginia. And then, you know, from there, there's a lot of other little tools that we use, like, um, you know, there's, um, uh, what's the name, a Google Voice. I know that uh, when we first started out, we used Google Voice where me and you could both access a business line together and messages come in. Again, just kind of promoting that collaborative effort uh, that comes with that. Um, and gosh, there's so many. I mean, Google Meet, Google Calendar, Google Chat, Google, you know, Google everything. I'm going to mention just uh, JP's so passionate about Google and it's wonderful. And he has a 
a wealth of knowledge to tell everyone, but it's not scary. I think a lot of people think about these things and they start thinking about, oh, what's in the cloud or the drive or right. And it's like a mystical place and they get nervous and it's, it's like, no, you really just go to google.com and then you can work it through there. So it's actually a very easy um, system if you sit down and kind of in comparison to some other ways that you've probably spent the brain power to learn how to systemize your business, Google Workspace is probably so much easier to implement. And uh, I just think, I think uh, one thing that you did, you definitely touched on it, but it is the fact that everybody has such access, right? I could drop something and it's there then from my phone, from my laptop, from wherever you need it. Yeah, that's cool. And and also one of the big things. Hey, Carol, I see you commenting over there. Um, Carol's here. Did you see her? Oh, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> hey, she's not the only one. <clears throat> yeah, I see. We got like five people. I wish I could see who it was. And I wish that they might say something. So that way we knew they were here. I see Carol. Um, and then I see, see a Facebook f- user. Hi. Oh, I do see For Facebook user. Are, they hi. Like, see, look. That's who it is yeah. right there. It's Facebook user says, hi, I wish I knew who it was. Um, so I think one of the cool things that we really enjoyed early on was that, you know, I'm on a Mac and I think at one point, you know, somebody else in our business was on a PC or a Windows computer. And what's really cool about Google is that there's this option to do like a convert the files to the Google uh, file format. And it can take any type of format and it transfers it into a Google file, like Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google. I mean, like every type of format that you can imagine that a Mac has or um, Windows has, Google has um, an online version that can be opened up from anywhere on any device and downloaded into whatever type of, like if it's a Google, let's say it's a Google Doc. And I wanted to download it and send it as a Google Word, or I mean a um, micro. I can't stop saying Google. I want to. Um, I want to download it and send it as a Microsoft uh, Word document. I can just download as Microsoft Word, and then boom, it's a Microsoft Word document. And so I thought that was something that was extremely cool that um, I didn't realize until probably a year into having Google that it could actually do that. So that was, I don't, I know that you're, you're a Mac person, I'm a Mac person, but we don't always deal with a lot of Mac people and Google solves that problem. Mm -hmm. Hi, Tracy, by the way, that's who it is. Um, We love Tracy. We love everyone, but you know, (laughs) Um, absolutely. It does solve that problem. And to even take it a step further for all of those that are like tech brains like me and you have, such intricate ways of wanting to show someone something, you can literally turn it into a website in a quarter of a second. You just hit publish to web and then you copy that and then they can use your spreadsheet from anywhere in the world. So, I mean, it's so amazing the benefits that you get. Like you don't have to code anything. Mm -hmm. It's so fast. So. Yeah, see, and that's where that's exactly so. Like where I'm, like, uh, I I think in columns and rows, and you think in like web page formatting. That was like a mind blowing thing that I learned from you. Is when you did that, you're like, "Hey, JP, look how easy it is. Click, 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 click." And I'm like, "Get out of here!" Right? And then so, there it is. All, yeah, just, yeah, you put it as a link on your website, and there's your whole spreadsheet. And anybody that wants to go through can just fill it out. Yeah. Or awesome. a Google form or anything like that. It's very it's so easy. They just make it a lot easier to use. And I think um, there's a stigma almost that technology is difficult or something of that nature. And uh, I just think it should be touched upon that Google went very far above and beyond to make this an easy system to learn how to use. Yeah. And so let's pause right there for a second, because while Google is awesome, and we started using Google five years ago. And this was before Microsoft had any type of cloud um, based system that they've that they released. And now, you know, since COVID and maybe a little bit before they have this Microsoft 365, which has Microsoft Teams. And there's like there's so much that I think Microsoft learned from Google and implemented into their system. And so if you're not a Microsoft or if you're not a Google believer because you believe Google already knows too much about you, 
the, and you like the security that Microsoft brings, so to speak, um, then Microsoft is something that you can definitely use to implement a lot of what we're going to talk about tonight as well. So even yeah, though we absolutely. like look into their OneDrive. So yeah, um, there you go. Exactly. And a lot of times they'll come standard with like your website. So you will have one of these, at least a basic version already come standard and free. So it's a beautiful tool to be able to use, especially for free. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, um, you know, when we talk about, okay, so people might be asking like, oh, where do I get started? Right? Like, how do I start with this? And so, Jessica, I think, you know, like sometimes our, our biggest strengths can be our biggest weaknesses, right? They, they lie pretty closely together. You know, you said that quite often. Um, and I actually, um, I, I learned that from your father, which is where I, where you may have learned it from, but, um, you know, I think one of the things that I love about Google is it allows you to compartmentalize. Right. And so if we think about the different um, you know, maybe the people that are watching this tonight or even on a replay, um, they may have different hats that they wear in their life. You know, maybe they have a personal side where they're handling baseball mom stuff and like, um, you know, handling kids and they have like their Gmail, like their name at gmail.com. And that's like a personal side of them. Right. And then now there's this entrepreneur side of what they're doing or just like some other type of business or side hustle where, they want to separate it and they want to make sure that like, Hey, when they're wearing that hat, that when people are communicating with them, that you understand like, Hey, you're dealing with JP at social soaring. So I'd like for you to use something where I can keep all of my social soaring stuff over here. And then all of my JP killed off dad stuff, you know, swim team stuff over here. And so I think the easiest way, to get started is to go out and whatever that little side hustle is, um, whatever, if it's an entrepreneur, if it's a business or a side hustle or whatever, like go out, spend $12 and get yourself a domain. So that way you can become official, right? Like it just adds to your author, to your um, authority uh, of what it is that you're trying to do. And so what Jessica's showing right here is like, here's, once you get a domain, you can now connect that domain to a Google, what they now Google calls it Google Workspace, right? That's like their suite of business tools that they offer. And once you connect that to Google, you can separate out all the different things that you do based off of whatever hat that you're wearing, right? So now you have Jessica at Social Soaring now has a Google Workspace where she can now build out her Google Drive. She can now separate her emails. She can now separate like all of her bookmarks into just um, social soaring stuff. And so I think like the easiest way to get started, go out, get a domain for whatever it is that you're looking to do. Go over to Google Workspace, like just type in Google Workspace, create an account and it's gonna ask you, do you already have a domain? And then you can walk through the process of connecting now your new domain to your Google workspace. And then now you can create that, you know, JP at social soaring.com, not, you know, this um, retire with social soaring at gmail.com. Like nothing says that I'm not serious about my side hustle, like whatever your side hustle name is at Gmail. at Gmail. Like it literally takes $12 to make yourself look like you're dead serious about what you're doing. Right. Well, and to be honest, there's so much more that comes with the suite too. Like I love using analytics. Um, that's one of my backbone features of Google where I spend a lot of my time. I know JP spends more time in organization in the drive. Um, but I love Google Analytics um, and then obviously Google Ads, right? And uh, so I think that all of it just, uh, because you can almost set up a lot of your other features using your Google account too, right? And then you don't have to remember passwords, everything's saved in your Chrome browser. It's just so easy rather than like having a Rolodex even, right? And then like a filing cabinet, you you could keep your paper files if you want, or they are in the drive forever. Right. 
So here, here's like some of the big things that I've, I see that sets us apart from most other people when we set stuff up like this. And um, Jessica, you might be able to pull up a, a screenshot of this or like a screen share um, is if you go into our Google Drive and then you, there might be a folder called company documents. Um, so if you go over like business docs right there, number nine, business documents, right? So if we go into business documents, you can see like we have everything that we get on paper, we scan in and we put it inside of our Google Drive. So that way, when you go to the bank and they're like, hey, do you have your articles of organization to open up your account? You're like, dang, I wish I had that. Well, hold on. Because we because we love Google, we can go right on this bad boy right here and we can say, hey, would it be okay if I email it to you? And you go right into your drive and you email them a copy of it. And so um, this right here, again, I'm just like, I love the the um, organization and the um, ability to be able to have things at your fingertips with Google Drive. And the other thing that... Um, um, Oh man, I just lost my train of thought when I was thinking I about love the thing. security. Oh yeah, the security is good too, right? Yeah, exactly. So like as you start building out your team, you can you you can limit what people see on your team. You can give them access to certain files, you can give them access to certain uh, folders. So like you can see like um, on our training right there, number two, you don't have to click on it, Jessica, just see how it says there's two groups and seven people. That's because anybody who's come through our organization has had access to this training. But notice on our accounting folder, there's only two people. It's like us and our accountant have access to the stuff that's in the accounting folder. And so, um, you know, that's, that's a really great feature of the Google Drive to be able to protect some of the information as well as give somebody access like that. And then I guess also for me, I would like to just reiterate that before we ever even move on to touch on the other systems that we're gonna talk about tonight, if you had to, in the beginning of your business, you could potentially run your client management system through here. You could potentially run, you know, a lot of your onboarding and things like that, your training techniques, um, just right completely through the drive. So even though we may touch on other things that we have personally decided we wanted to invest in, um, there's always a free way to do that. So I guess especially for the CRM, right? Because there was a period in time when this is the way we were keeping our clients. So yeah. So there's a really cool tip that I want to share real quick um, because I'm reading this just says Facebook user. I'm sorry. I don't know who made this comment, but um, you know, they say it is more seamless to use Gmail and Google. We use 365 emails and we have to download files, then upload to Google drive. I think we should do away with 365 altogether. Awesome. So I just want to share my screen real quick because I want to share uh, a real cool tool that we found. Let's do share screen. Let me make sure I grab the right one. Um, so, oh no, it's going to do this like screen on screen oh, on screen. Hold on, hold on. I can no, 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 that's me. Hold on. Watch this. I know what I'm doing. I've done this before. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm just going to share my other screen. Uh, share screen. All right, so um, over here, um, what we have is this thing, it's called uh, Google Drive for Desktop. Google Drive for Desktop. This, what this does is this really allows you to have a mounted physical drive on your computer to be able to access Google Docs without having to download them. So if we're talking about things that you should take away from tonight's call, one, grab yourself a domain and then connect it to Google Workspace. Two, Google something called Google Drive for Desktop. And then what it does, let me see if I can pull up another screen here. Oh no, I lost you. Let me see something real quick. All right, and let me go back over here. All right, cool, I'm back. All right, so Jessica, can you see this over here? Yes, yes I can. All right, let me see if I can, oh. All right, so when you do a Google Drive for desktop, what it does is it mounts 
a literally almost like a physical Google Drive. And then you can map that to your your domain Google Drive. So like our social soaring mines mounted to anchored homes. So my anchored homes Google Drive. So you can see like I can go inside of these shared drives. And this is all of the folders that I have that are inside of my virtual drive up in the cloud that I created for anchored homes. And I can literally go in here and go under like any folder. I can go to and then it, it because this Google Drive for desktop just replicates all the time anything that you drop in there it'll it'll now create a copy and put it in this Google Drive for desktop. So this is a really cool way to get around what um you know that comment was which was downloading, saving, uploading, converting, downloading again. So when you have this, you you limit all of those downloads and uploads. You literally just upload it to Google Drive, and then you can have access to it right here without having to download, upload, download, upload. So this is a really cool tool. So I guess, um, what would you say then would probably be, um, we talked a little bit about organizations and record keeping, right? Um, even phone, email, all kinds of things that you can get out of there. So let's touch on another business basic, which might be finances. What are some tools maybe that you have used to maybe, I don't know, control your company's finances in the past? What's worked for you? What have you used for accounting, um, record keeping, invoicing? All of these things are very real business owner issues. So I'm just yeah, wondering. for sure. So um, I think I told you I I think and sleep in columns and rows. So I absolutely love a good spreadsheet that can do accounting. Um, however, most professionals that I tell that to, they're like, yeah, I mean, like, that's cool. But there's software out there that can do that. Uh, but the one thing that I really didn't like about all the software that was out there is I just didn't feel like I could manipulate it as well as I could like a Google sheet um, or a Microsoft Excel. And it's because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but I would say just to get started, I mean, we ran our, um, you know, we ran, this is before I knew about some other free programs that I'll get to here in just a second, but we ran our entire real estate business the first year and a half on a spreadsheet. Uh, which took me forever to build out. And it was very tedious to keep up with and do reports at the end um, because that's, you know, I wanted that, I'm going to air quote and say, I wanted that control over every little piece of that. Um, so you can do that. You can do a, a Google spreadsheet. Uh, but now, uh, you know, where we started, Jessica, and where a lot of our other businesses are, um, are we use Wave. Um, you know, wave accounting or it's, yeah, I think it's called wave app is what it's called maybe or wave accounting. It's absolutely free. So look it up wave W A V E wave accounting, and you can start a free account. And, um, I'll be darned if I didn't blow like my bookkeeper's mind, my CPA's mind, she's like wave. She's like, that can't possibly do anything close to what QuickBooks can do, especially if it's free. She goes, can you do this? I'm like, well, can I share my screen and I can show you? And then you can tell me. And she's like, oh my gosh, okay. Well, can you do this? And I was like, I think we can do that. And like you saw, like when we first started social soaring, like we created products, we created invoices, we created sales receipts. I mean, we were doing things, automatic payments. We were doing things with Wave that it's like QuickBooks can't really do, right? And it was free. And, mm -hmm. you know, so like I think – any business owner that's looking for a solution for accounting at the beginning. And I know Jessica, you have an accounting background, so you may be like in your head slapping me in the face right now. I don't know, but no, because my, my, I think in terms of numbers, but my degree is in economics. So I am always down to save a buck. Um, <laughs> and that's just the truth. Yeah. That's awesome. <clears throat> um, so what did you think of wave when we first started with wave? Honestly, I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was a free solution that honestly did everything we needed it to do. Um, we didn't really change until we learned about a different type of an accounting program and like the way that our philosophy behind our business mentality was going to change. Right. And so we actually, and that change was me and you were handling wave 
um, as business owners. And then we said, we need to get this off of our plate, right? Like we need to get the accounting off of our plate because chasing down customers every month or just, you know, the invoicing and all that, like, it's just something that's, that's minimum wage activity stuff that at the end of the day, it's not really building our business. Um, it's not helping us get more clients. It's not helping us produce more content. It's not helping it. You know what I mean? So, and I would say that's the same for everybody else. Like, you know, I relate a lot to the real estate industry. And so like, if we're the last thing I ever wanted to do when I came home was do like some kind of reconciliation of my books or anything like that. And so, you know, that's where we got to. And, and the only reason we changed off the wave app is because the bookkeeper that we hired, they're like, you have to go to QuickBooks because that's the industry standard. Right. So we went to QuickBooks online um, and it's been great. They've been able to take everything that we're doing. And, um, you and know, I mean, it's, it's easy. It's very mm -hmm. And I, I think that there's a lot of people out here out in the world that are probably still spending a lot more money. Um, and I don't know if everybody knows, but like I even got my business taxes done through QuickBooks because QuickBooks and TurboTax are integrated. So it's one kind of cool thing and you can hire a business accountant right through there and they can do it all for you. If you didn't, you know, we took a, we read a book and did uh, something a little bit different. So Profits First. It was an amazing yeah. book. Profits First was amazing. I would say if anybody has ever heard of Profits First, oh, your dad is on the freaking live event. He said, thanks for the tip. I don't know what <laughs> tip it was, but hi, Ken Happel. Hi. Hey, thanks for all the guidance and mentorship. And I, we just quoted you a minute ago. I don't know if you heard us, but um, we love us some Kenny Happel. Well, and he's my dad, so super hard. Sure. Today. And I think he's got probably all the kids down at the other house right now, so I could be here with y'all. So, oh, is he still in town? Yeah, my whole family's still here. Yeah, so celebrating the Fourth of July and uh, just thankful. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, oh, actually, it's me. It says so. That means it's my mother. Oh, he's it's 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 Pef. It's Pef, Wendy Peffercorn. It seems to be. <laughs> um, yeah, so accounting, tax records, it's, it is serious business. And unless you're going to stay on top of it, it is awesome to use the free tools as long as you have the time in your day to make sure that you are really going to stay on top of every transaction that you make and why and how. Um, and if you're not minded that way, then that is probably maybe a task you want to delegate out. So even though I am minded that way, it was one of the first tasks I was willing to delegate because I guess for myself, I always want to be learning something new, not yeah. doing something I'm, I could do in my sleep. Right. Right. So, um, okay. So what would be obviously the next thing might be your marketing. So there's so many tools to marketing that are out there that are free. Um, and even if they're not free, they might be of minimal cost to you. So what were some of the first tools that you opted to get your brand noticed? Uh, and well, obviously on anchored homes or, you know, whichever. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously social media, I think is one of the, the easiest and, and best ways and free to get your brand noticed. Right. I mean, um, it literally takes like three clicks and you can create your own company page uh, and then, you know, go in there and start filling out things about your company and adding pictures and logos and even the logo. Like, I mean, the logo is fairly simple to either create yourself with a program. Like um, I'm going to say a word that you hate Canva. I know you think that that's like coloring with crayons compared to your fancy Adobe spark um, you know, artistic pencils. Uh, I'm just messing with you, Jessica. I know. Um, but Canva's awesome, right? Canva's a free tool. It's got a logo maker type thing in there. It's got a lot of different things. So you can go in and um, create a logo in Canva. Actually, um, Glory B Homes, I actually created like a little temporary logo inside of Canva. Um, I don't know. Nobody ever said anything. I don't know if anybody saw it yet, but um, oh, well, I think, I mean, I'll probably end up like actually taking some pictures from like the original farm and putting it together. 
Awesome. And then, so you'll do that in a program like Adobe, um, Adobe, what? Spark or I mean, Photoshop, or it just depends on what I end up in. Right. But there's, there's a lot of tools out there and even Spark has a free version, although I'll say it's extremely limited. Um, There's a free version of that too. So if you just want to try out a couple of different tools and if graphic design is your thing, there's all kinds of, I mean, free image downloaders, there's Pexels, there's uh, videos. So there's all kinds of fun stuff that you could just start to play with. I mean, the, Adobe in a, integrates with Unsplash. So, mm-hmm. and I'm sure Un- Unsplash is like another, like a free stock photo type of thing, right? And so, mm-hmm. yeah, and so those are ways that you can create your own. When we started uh, Anchored Homes, we went out to Fiverr. I literally paid, I think it was like 25 bucks for the premium package. And I gave some ideas of what I wanted for a logo within 36 hours. I had the first revision or the first version of my logo. And then I provided a couple feed, a couple pieces of feedback and I had my final logo, which I've had now for almost four years. Um, and so now that's part of like, you talk about the marketing and the branding and stuff like that, right? So getting a logo and understanding a couple things. One, I'm not a very like artistic person. Um, and I like to think I am, I have a very hard time explaining my style, right? Jessica. Um, I don't even know how to explain my style. So I do. I do. <laughs> so you do. You do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, only it's because I was like, I'm trying to tell you what my style is and you're putting out. I'm like, I don't like that. You're like, hmm, right? So and you alter it, right? And yeah, absolutely. Like, and that's the point, yeah. right? It's like done is better than perfect, right? So mm-hmm. it would be silly to get hung up on trying to get the very best and perfect logo at, you know, on the very first time out of the gate. And so my my advice would be like done is better than perfect. Get a, get a logo, start building that online credibility, that online marketing through Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and Snapchat and wherever else that you think that you can find your clients or your customers and start getting the brand out there. And that's how we did it to begin with. Like that was really like, it was kind of like a guerrilla marketing tactic using social media. And I was just, going to say, I don't know if anybody out there remembers this, but social soaring has not always been green. So it, I'll, I'll throw that out there to the audience. If anybody can comment and tell us what the original color of social soaring was, maybe we'll give you something next month. I don't know, something special. I was but- looking around to see if the color, cause there are like one every once in a while slips up. You're like, wait, where, how, where, did you, where were you? Yeah. Hiding? Where did you come from? Yeah. So yeah, that'd be cool to see if anybody knows what the original colors of social soaring was. But um, we were not yeah. in black. So and to be honest, most people would not remember that. I don't I don't think. So no. you have the ability to change and adapt over time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, gosh, we've we've went through a lot of different changes through our colors, through our fonts, through our like through a lot of different ones until we landed on one that resonated with us and we're like, yeah, that's the one, right? Mm-hmm. Like that, that's the one that we can use. And so, um, you know, to your, to your point and what, what it was that you asked at the beginning, which was like, you know, the marketing systems, when you first start out, like what kind of systems do you have for marketing? And <clears throat> I think the logo is the biggest one, right? Like once you get the logo, then you can start putting it on like a lot of the things that you do, business cards on, websites, on social media profiles, on packages that you make create that have information that you're handing out to contractors or or lenders or real estate agents if you're in the real estate field or, you know, if you're in like the water treatment, you know, like clients or type some type of printing or something like that, right? So like once you get your logo, I think that's a huge piece. And then you can create all these different pieces of content that you're handing out or making visible to people. Well, and I think your tagline is extremely important too. Um, just to kind of throw that out there, I kind of believe that those two go hand in hand, and because it is the main statement of your business, what it is that you do in th- three to five words, right? So, yeah. why why do you bring value? That is your value statement, um, and it's upfront, and it's it from that you can kind of build your core values and everything else. So, um, oh, you're getting you're you're gonna go down. Man, that was a really good book that we read, right? The Customer Service Revolution. Mm-hmm. Um, that really, um, 
you know, this is going to be a rabbit hole real quick, but I really do believe it's probably one of the foundational pieces, which is your, your, the core identity of your company. Now, I would say that you don't necessarily need this fully in place in order to, you know, do your first deal or get your first client. Uh, but it definitely helps guide the decisions that you make and really also keep, continue to keep um, that motivation and that inspiration because it's just like it gives it character. It gives it it like fills out a certain piece of, you know, that aspect of your business where now instead of speaking as Jessica, who has this idea for like a social media, like, no, you're speaking as social soaring. And social soaring has values and pillars and and all these things that you can now stand upon with a bunch of confidence. And I've seen this a lot um, recently with some students that I've been coaching is that, you know, once you create that, you know, I, I think when people start a business, they um, they have an idea, they have a dream, they have a goal of where they think like when they daydream about like what this and is it be. not like your baby, like your passion. So at that point, then it almost becomes like your true self. Like I will always be innovative. Yeah, I yeah. will always try to be economical. Like it is who I am at the core of myself too, yep. when I think about it. And whether that's because we created the business based on us or vice versa, um, it works out that way. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. Um, that was a rabbit hole, but it was a good one. But I think another, it's good. another, just when you're talking about laying foundations, websites, you can do a basic website builder for $6.99 a month from multiple different and don't think that it has to be some crazy intricate thing off the bat, right? So there's a lot that you can do on your own just as a business owner. And I guess um, that's definitely another piece, right? So when you're talking about marketing and your pillars, another way to get yourself out there is absolutely your website and then to have a very strong Google backing. So your Google, again, would come straight off that Google workspace that you've been working so hard on. And now you just transfer it all to your Google, my business. So I think that those are three of the most foundational pillars and then everything else kind of spiders out from there. Yeah, 100%. And um, I'm going to come back to this. I'm not going to, I like right now, I want to actually touch upon because I think um, what I want to try to do is lead to something that I think made a big difference in our business and, you know, anchored homes, which was once you start building out that foundation of the identity of who you are, um, it really, uh, it gives you a lot of confidence to be able to speak as the business, you know, speak, um, you know, and, and you made a reference, you're talking about like, it's our baby. Right. And so I'm going to see if I can't map this over, but like as a first time parent, your confidence level is like down here, right? Like you think like you're going to kill your baby. Mm -hmm. Everything you do, you think that you're going to kill the baby, right? I'm not feeling- I didn't sleep the whole first night. Right, exactly. The first week, I remember always checking on the baby. So your confidence level is down here. Now, fast forward, you know, five years after being a parent and then maybe having another child, you know, like the confidence level that you have from your experience- um, and just everything that happens through those five years of growth. Now, imagine if you can harness that, right? The idea of whatever that is now bring it back to when you first start your business and then now be able to, there's a term out there that people, I, I like it, but I hate it, but fake it till you make it right. Like is a term. And so I, I replace that with act as if act as if your business has already been in business for a year and you've already done the five transactions that you have the goal to do. Now, how are you going to speak? How are you going to act? What type of things are going to be around you? And just envision that and now bring that back. And then now you'll have that confidence that you need to now do. This is where I was going. This was a very long way to get here. I but actually have a comment. So go ahead. So one of the biggest things when you talk about marketing and you talk about Google and you talk about systems is video, right? Right. So once we got enough confidence to get on video and get on YouTube and then now get on Facebook live, then our visibility went through the roof, right? Our followership, our reach went through the roof. You know, when you put a video on YouTube and you use the right words, 
when you're being guided by a company like social soaring on what type of words that you can use in there to get the most SEO, like your ranking goes up. And so I think, you know, to the point of, you know, confidence and getting, you know, being able to speak as the business and just having like immediate confidence to be able to get on there and be like, yeah, we have goals of doing this. This is what we're doing, blah, blah, blah. Right. So that well, was kind of I think for that somebody one. that's looking for, what what is that right what is that about me that sets me apart like i have this business this is my idea and for me it's always like what is that thing that gets you through late night when everybody else is asleep and you're still working what it why what what is that thing that little twinge inside of you right that little honey badger that's the part um that i think you got to tap into and kind of be able to explain and put into words and then learn to live those words. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. That's like, that's your, why I think for me, it's the people that count on me to be successful, right? Like I, I have a lot of people that trust that I'm making a decision, like, and it comes at the expense of like my time with them sometimes. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'll just say like my family, like I became an entrepreneur to have like this idea of financial freedom and do everything that I want to do with my family. And they, they were like, okay, we trust that you're going to make this happen. And so I never want to break that trust and I want to fulfill on the things that I say. And so that's what keeps me going. And like, I want to be, a good role model. I want to be successful. And even if I fail, like I want to show them how to be successful even when you fail. Right. And so it's like, oh, I yeah. always want to try to per like that thing that keeps me up at night is for me, it's my family. And like for everybody else, it might be something different. Oh, absolutely. Um, I feel like I just don't ever, I I'm not a quitter. I won't be a quitter. So uh, for me, it's like just that will not quit attitude. Like I might not know what it is and somebody might have figured it out faster or smarter than me, but you can, pr I promise you that I'm going to go seek that person out and stalk them until they tell me what they did because I need to know. And it's just like a burning desire to never quit until the job is completed. Um, and like I said, sometimes like things get scheduled out longer or it might take a while in the process, but it's just that I will complete it attitude. I don't know something about yeah. that. So you said you had a comment. Did you say what you wanted to say about the comment when we were talking about um, building confidence and okay, cool. Can I, I, I cause I, I want to try to um, talk about another Google tool that we use and then like a theory behind why we do it and why it's good for business. Go for it. So um, Google calendar is like I live and die by my calendar. Jessica, I know you do too. I mean, with the amount of things that we have going on, like we live and die by our calendar. We live and die by our time blocking, which is what Google Calendar is really good at. And so anybody who's becoming an entrepreneur, they need to be a master of every minute of their day, right? Either they're going to own their time or the time's going to own them. And there's a lot of times when NTW, I, no time wasted, Tony Robbins, look it up. Go ahead. <laughs> no time wasted, NTW, look it up. <clears throat> so Google Calendar is a really great way to maximize every minute of your day. Some of us wear multiple hats. Somebody, Some have nine to five where it, there's maybe no, it's a non-negotiable. Like during that nine to five, they can't do anything. So those minutes before and after that nine to five, and even during lunch are extremely valuable. If you're looking to get out of the rat race of that nine to five and start that business and that journey down the entrepreneurial um, path, you need to be able to use something like Google Calendar to time block. And one of the biggest things that I think that we found success with Jessica with Google Calendar and time blocking is a weekly cadence of accountability, doing weekly meetings. And even as a solopreneur, someone who is doing this all by themselves. Sitting and down with yourself is important. 100%. Creating that space where you have a weekly meeting, a business meeting. You have a weekly mm -hmm. business meeting. Even if it's with yourself, it's intentional about what it is that you're going to cover. So that means th like during that meeting, like there's no cell phones, right? Because you wouldn't let anybody else have a cell phone. There's no checking email. There's no doing this. It's literally like, let me put a box around myself. This is what time blo blocking is. Let me put a box around myself. I'm strictly focused on what do I need to hold myself accountable for this week? 
and write it out. So that way the next meeting, the next week, you can say, did I get these things accomplished? Yes, good job. Let me hold my hand up, high five, whatever you need to do yeah, to you give yourself right inside your drive, right? just in a sheet and you can make the accountability. So uh, uh, making it so everyone can see it definitely inspires you to um, make sure that you hit your weekly goals because otherwise everyone can see that you didn't hit your weekly goals as well. Yeah, so man. Oof. That those, level of accountability is nice. Those, those, those weekly KPIs are... Uh, Ooh, it's kind of stressful, right? Like, cause you have all those eyes on there, but it's good. It's a good stress. It's a good motivator, right? Well, and if it doesn't get done, it also gives your team an opportunity to be able to be like, Hey, why, how can I help you? And yeah. so it's a communication tool. It, it says much as you make of it. 100%. So I do think that there's one more probably foundational thing, at least for us and a lot of other companies. Um, maybe they, maybe they don't, need a client retention management system quite as quickly. But for a company like ourselves, or maybe somebody that's doing a lot of shipping, you might have multiple addresses, things of that nature. When you start having tons of client information, um, a client retention management system is definitely a benefit. Um, so maybe tell me about what was the first client retention CRM that you went with JP and why? So as a real estate entrepreneur, I was kind of hand fed into something called real flow, uh, which was our contact data, you know, our contact management system uh, that had our property contacts, our seller and buyer contacts. Um, and it really, it allowed us to be able to do like a mass communication uh, through email to the contacts that we had on our list. So it was really cool. We were able to take a lot of our business cards and just take everything off the business card and put it right into that database. So that way we can, um, you know, reference it really quickly. So um, that was the first one. And then uh, outside of the real estate space, you know, in all of our other businesses, we use HubSpot. Uh, HubSpot is a an amazing, amazing uh CRM that is free for like just basic use. And they have so many features and add-ons that you can do to, you know, like beyond the free version. Um, you know, you start getting up into some of these other levels that give you the ability to grow and scale your business. I mean, we I'm running on free on for three of my business right now, I think. No, two of my businesses are free and then two of the other ones are like the next level up, like $50 a month or something like that to be and able to do I think that that's such an important point that you're making right there, JP, is that not every CRM is for, or every tool in general is for every company, right? It depends right. on the level. It depends on your interaction that you're having. It depends on the tools that you need. Maybe you need some kind of, you're in construction, right? So maybe you have something completely different about yard signs or something, right? right. That needs right. to be an introductory tool for you. Um, so just, I guess, add those things to your list or subtract them. But I, I do think it's important to note, like you have two companies on a free version and two companies not because they're at different places or different times. So, yeah. And I think um, if I'm not mistaken, you uh, recently social soaring is now like a HubSpot partner, right? There's there's uh, something that you can offer the audience. Yeah. So um, we are partner with a lot of these different companies now. So we actually partner with Constant Contact and HubSpot. So and there's different reasons for different clients that I would use different products. So if I'm doing a lot more um, pretty visual emailing then I might go with something like constant contact, especially if I do not have a team of people underneath me. If I have, it's also a little bit cheaper. Um, however, if I have a team of people underneath of me and I need to delegate responsibilities and push emails here or there, or be able to create automatic workflows, um, things of that nature, that's, that's when I would use HubSpot. So it completely just depends on where you're at in your business and what you're using the CRM for, in my opinion. Um, yeah. And yes, we're a partner of both. So check them out on our affiliates page. And um, I believe it's 38% off if you sign up through us. So Dang, I'm going to have to keep yeah. that in mind when I start my okay, next business. Cool. And Constant Contact is 33. So 
I know that. And it just depends on, you know, and we're not pushing anything on you. It's literally just these are systems that are out there and we believe in them. If we didn't believe in them, we didn't wouldn't put them on our website. And that's even why I did put two different CRMs because I use two different CRMs depending on what it is that I'm doing for a hair company. I would, hi, honey. My daughter said, hi, mommy. Um, yeah, so uh, for a hair company that has maybe no one working underneath of them, but they're selling a lot of products and visuals and things of that nature, and they want to do it for a little bit less expensive, then they may go with the Constant Contact account. Now, if you want a lot more capabilities and you need all of those features, then you could start for, I think it's 50 bucks a month is the starter intro accounts yep. for HubSpot. So awesome. definitely not a bad deal. And you start to be able to like delegate access and like, this is your job. And then when you click off that task, it's going to automatically go over to JP. And then when JP's done his task that is next, it automatically goes to the next person. So it's very nice for a workflow where there's multiple chain, like people in your chain communication links. Yeah. All right. So now, so we've talked about a couple of things that, you know, people on this call or on this video or wherever they're watching it at, um, some things that they can do to, to get started. Right. And so, mm -hmm. you know, through getting a domain, through connecting it through Google workspace, um, a couple of tools that we, uh, and tips that we talked about within the Google workspace, like Google calendar, um, Google drive, Gmail, um, the Google drive for desktop, and then, um, you know, then to, to transfer from that over to, um, you know, getting some type of accounting system set up, whether you use something free like Wave or, uh, you know, going for a paid version of like QuickBooks or something like that. And then um, lastly, to another free tool. I mean, we, we, we provided a lot of free tools here for people to get up and running. Um, another yeah. free tool for CRMs is HubSpot up mm -hmm. until a certain point until you outgrow it. Um, and then there's a lot of other ones, you know, in between all of that stuff, right? We talked about a lot of different options. So I think we covered a lot on this call when it comes to systems. For sure. I feel like everybody's brains are probably bubbling. So I think, uh, maybe at this point we should just like open it up and see if anybody has any questions or, um, all right, let's see. So yeah, I'm looking through like questions we could have blown the biggest minds there. <laughs> All right. So it looks like Mr. Happel, he needs to make sure he understands multiple Google calendars and how to set meetings for others. All right. Do you want to take that or do you want me to take it? Go ahead and I'll piggyback. All right. Awesome. Here. Um, so uh, well, uh, I still have a lot to learn about Google. So here's what I love about having multiple Google calendars is on your phone. Super easy. You can just go to the, the Google Calendar app and then all of your different accounts will automatically filter into one, um, one Google app or the Calendar app. Uh, the only thing you have to be aware of is like whenever you, if you're talking about managing things, whenever you're going to create an account, you have to be aware of what calendar, what account that you're creating it for when you're doing it from your phone. Now on the desktop, it's not, Google hasn't figured out how to make this as streamlined as they have on the phone. And you actually have to now add those accounts inside of like, you need to pick one main account, right? And so if you wanted to pick, if you have multiple businesses and then you have a personal account, you know, maybe you pick one of your main businesses and then now all of your calendars feed into one calendar. If it was extremely important to you that you, you're able to access it from one calendar. Um, so as you can see here at Jessica, Jessica has multiple um, calendars that she can integrate into one calendar. And that's just going into the sharing settings of that calendar and then sharing it with whatever that one company is that you want to have access to when you load up one calendar. Now I'm going to, without making this as, this too confusing, what I do is I don't give access to any of my calendars to any of my other companies. I actually have separate tabs, separate separate Chrome profiles for each 
um, each company and each company has its own calendar. And so I, on my desktop, have to open up multiple calendars to be able to see everything. So what, if I'm ever in a situation, like I'm literally never more than two feet away from this thing. So if I'm ever in a situation where I want to um, see all my calendars at once, I just open it up inside my, on my phone. Um, and I look to see like for that day, what do I have going on for that day? There's probably a better way. This is uh, why what we do is so great is there's like a hundred different ways to set this up. And so it's just- why I yeah. stop screen sharing because I don't have multiple Chrome tabs. That's not, I have all of mine on one and I toggle between them when I need to. And I think that that would drive JP insane but it's easier and faster for me. And I can always open up multiple if I want to. Right. Anybody else? Oh, maybe a silly question. I don't think it's silly. What, all right. What's it say? Is there a way to color code or otherwise distinguish the multiple calendars? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You can do yeah, that. It's actually it. right. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. No, I was just going to say it's actually right inside the sharing settings. When you go into your calendar settings on your phone, or I mean on your uh, desktop, you can give each calendar a different color. Um, and also, are you going to are you sharing your screen? There. Yeah, I'm getting there. Sorry, it's a little delayed. So, um, so like Jessica, scroll down to um, all right now on those three dots to the right of it. You see how your Jessica's blue? If you open this up right here just over the three dots, you can literally change the color right there. It's as simple as hovering over whatever calendar and then changing it to that color right there. So where you might do that with multiple calendars, um, I actually do this with my time blocking. So if I have marketing activities that I time block throughout the week, I'll color code that a certain thing. If I have redevelopment activities, I color code those like my meetings, my contractor onboarding activities. Um, if I'm working on S like scopes of work, like I'll color code those based off the department. So that way I can quickly look at my calendar and see, oh, I've got a ton of marketing stuff this week or a ton of marketing stuff today. So I actually color code based off of my departments. Um, yeah, go ahead. It just that they want to be custom. Right? Like 38 BBFF or what did you change it to? Mm, it didn't take because I didn't hit the button right. 30, I didn't hit the save. 38 BBFF, right? Oh, no. Yes, what, are you doing? what color is this? What color are you doing? I'm doing green. It's our green. Oh. It's just not doing it. Hit enter. 37 FB93. Hit enter first. Mm -mm. No? Mm, all right. Well, that was a great question. And I think that's it. Um, I don't see any other questions that we didn't answer along the way, Jess. I know, but I can't stop now until I figured out that I didn't put the pound sign. Hashtag, uh, whatever you want to call it in front of it. So there you go, everybody. I told you I can't quit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, um, if there's no more questions, I'll stop screen sharing and everybody have a great week. Thank you so much for joining us, even though it was a very busy 4th of July weekend. So thank you. Thank you for coming. Hold on, I can't leave without doing my. Oh, oh. Look at that. Oh, I got to do it. I couldn't help myself. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a good night.